The New Hampshire primary is woven into the fabric of Granite State politics, and for decades, every four years, the state and the two major political parties have successfully protected first-in-the-nation status against all manner of challenges. But a unique situation has arisen this year as the Democratic National Committee has thrown open its primary calendar and created a new application process that allows any state party to seek the coveted slots that have been occupied by Iowa and New Hampshire. Many see this as a real threat, but the New Hampshire Democratic Party is remaining calm. Here this morning to explain why are NHDP Chairman Ray Buckley and DNC Committee Woman Joanne Dowdell. Thank you both for joining us. So, Good morning. Chairman Buckley, there's a lot of hand-wringing going on right now about this new process and what it means for the state. What makes you confident that you'll be able to hold on here? Well, it's not significantly different than uh, what we've had to do every four years for uh, the past uh, 40, 50 years. Uh, we have to uh, explain why uh, we should remain first. And we believe that we're uh, going to be able to do that again, just as we have uh, successfully every four years uh, in the past few decades. Uh, New Hampshire uh, provides a, a, un a unique uh, and I think very special uh, platform for candidates running for president. Uh, and I look forward to the discussion, uh, but I also uh, look forward to uh, a uh, primary continuing here in New Hampshire in 2024 and many years after. Committee Woman Dowdell, in this new application process, there are three main criteria, diversity, competitiveness, and feasibility. In your view, what's going to be the most important thing for the Granite State to prove? Well, thank you again, Adam, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, uh, as the chairman said, the Granite State has held the first in the nation primary, presidential primary, for a number of years. And we have a tremendous story to tell. On diversity, I know that there's been some criticism about uh, the diverse makeup of the Granite State, but as an African-American woman, I would push back on that a little bit and say that I have seen firsthand just how engaged voters of color in New Hampshire are, as demonstrated really also by the constituency caucuses of the party. And second, diversity is something that's beyond just racial and ethnic description. So we have geographic diversity, we have socioeconomic diversity, we have cultural diversity, and I think that, uh, again, we'll be able to tell our story very well. As far as competitiveness, oh my gosh. I mean, our ability to contribute to the party's ability to win in the general election is unprecedented. And I think that uh, working with Chairman Buckley and our congressional delegation, we'll be able to tell that story as well. The Granite State is a battleground state, a true battleground state. And we have um, a real, just a real uh, opportunity that no other state really presents as far as the ability of candidates, no matter how uh, full their campaign coffers are, to be able to come here and campaign from one end of the state to the other and speak firsthand and face to face with voters. So yes, I'm very confident and I look forward to having the opportunity to tell our story. Chairman Buckley, part of the way this has worked for so many years is that Iowa and New Hampshire join forces to stay at the front. Is that special relationship intact? Well, I think that uh, we have been uh, together now for uh, several decades, since the 1970s, uh, and since uh, the inclusion of Nevada and South Carolina, uh, the four states have worked uh, very closely together, and we still work uh, closely together, but uh, you know, New Hampshire has its own unique story. Um, we believe that the four early states have worked very well uh, in the last four presidential elections, uh, or the Democratic nominee for president received the majority votes uh, in all four. So uh, we would argue that all four uh, uh, have done uh, their job and uh, performed the role that they were asked to do. Uh, but uh, that said, uh First and foremost, we need to uh, uh, give the argument on why New Hampshire should remain the first in the nation primary. And Committee Woman Dowdell, you already touched on, on what many view as the most potent argument against New Hampshire's status, the, the relative lack of racial diversity. And we've talked with you before about this issue on this program, about how the reductive nature of that argument effectively erases the people of color who do live here. But 
What can New Hampshire do uh, to guarantee the DNC a more inclusive process that does lift up the diverse voices we have here? Well, I think that we, the, the party right now is doing a tremendous job of being very inclusive of all groups. I mean, through our constituency caucuses, we have the ability and have shown that we can mobilize and get boots on the ground and knock on doors. I think that we just have to tell our story. It's very compelling, Adam. And I really do feel very confident that we will retain our position as first in the nation presidential primary. And one of the saving graces of New Hampshire's first in the nation status has been that presidents of the White House have fallen in love with how the primary brings people together and the candidates so closely together through their own experiences. But it's a unique situation this time because President Biden has had not just one, but three not so great New Hampshire primary experiences. Isn't that a problem here, Chairman Buckley, that the president or many of his close advisors might have felt snubbed by New Hampshire and they might like to return the favor? Uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden's been in New Hampshire since uh, 1980 uh, when uh, he came to the Chateau restaurant to help uh, the re-election of Senator John Durkin, I remember, because I picked him up at the airport. Uh, he has a deep affection uh, for uh, the state of New Hampshire. He has great relationships. Uh, he has a strong relationship, uh, obviously, with Governor Lynch uh, and so many others. Uh, many of our uh, leadership uh, in the party, Senator Susi. Uh, Bill Shaheen, uh, Joanne Dowdell, Martha Bull Clark, all supported uh, Joe Biden in the primary. So uh, he's got some great relationships that have existed for, for many, many decades, including, of course, Mary Carey Foley and, and the late uh, uh, Mayor Foley of, of uh, Port, Portsmouth. This, this is ultimately his decision, right, Mr. Chairman? If the Democratic Party, if this committee decides to abandon the New Hampshire primary somehow, it's President Biden as the leader of the party who has the final say, right? Well, um, uh, we believe that uh, you know the members of the the DNC uh, Rules and Bylaws Committee uh, will uh, take an independent look uh, and realize that uh, New Hampshire des uh, deserves uh, to stay, remain uh, first in the nation. Uh, and uh, we look forward to that conversation. Committee Women Dowdell, how much of a factor is the New Hampshire state law that dictates the primary must go at least a week ahead of any similar contest, no matter what? Do you think any swing votes within the DNC will want to not necessarily deal with the awkwardness of having a rogue, non-sanctioned primary? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that we're going to get there, Adam. I really don't. I think that the fact that we do have a statute is just another benefit for the Granite State as far as our positioning. But I think that our story on its own, on its merits, will show why New Hampshire has and will continue to be first in the nation for its presidential primary. And Chairman Buckley, we now have, I think, a couple of weeks left until the letter needs to be sent out declaring the intent to enter this process. Is that already in the mail or are you going to send it out soon? Uh, it's going to be in the mail today, actually. <laughs> what, can you give us a sense of what it says? What, you know, is it just sort of like we want in or what, are you, I guess to what extent does this have to be sort of a production? Well, uh, you know, everything is, we think through everything before uh, we take a step. Uh, and it's a, a brief outline uh, of New Hampshire, but uh, uh, nothing, uh, no breaking news in, in, in the letter. All right. Uh, an HDP chairman and DNC committee woman, Joanne Dodell, thank you for joining us this morning on Close Up. Thank you. Thank you, Adam.